Hello and welcome back to 5 Minute Materials Landscape Edition. Today we're going to be looking at landscape grass types and the grass output node and how you can procedurally place grass and other small foliage onto your landscape wherever you paint certain layers. So the first thing that we are going to do is we're going to create a new asset. It is in the foliage subsection and it's landscape grass type. Uh, let's call this grass tutorial, tutorial apparently. So if you double click on this, then you'll be greeted with this big empty looking screen. But you'll notice there's a little plus icon here. So this is gonna add an element. And then when we expand that, you can see a lot of properties. So we're gonna grab a grass. And so now I've got this grass here. It's a really wonky color, but we're not gonna worry about that for today's video. You can set the density of the foliage. So anywhere between zero and a thousand. There's a bunch of other settings like cull distance. You'll especially want to play around with this because obviously having a lot of triangles on screen at once can kill your frames per second. The scaling, so you can set a minimum scaling. So let's go like 0 0.5 and two, just so we get a, a huge variety of stuff. Random rotation, you'll want on all of the time, most of the time. Align to surface makes it sort of always orient out from the landscape. So if there's a hill on your landscape, the foliage will stick out this way, or you might want it to go straight up. Then we've got receives decals. We'll keep that on for now. Cast dynamic shadow. We want to turn off for grass because it can cause a lot of issues and you don't necessarily need dynamic shadows on huge dense grass. So now in our landscape material, uh, which we set up last video what we're going to do is get a grass output node and in this grass type we're going to get our grass tutorial layer and we're also going to hit it again and expand this thing and let's make one for our dirt layer as well so what are we going to put into this node well all we're going to do is get landscape layer sample and we're going to type in the name of our whichever layer we want this to appear on and so what this is going to do and this is important if we were to get this grass layer sample and just plug it into the base color then you'll see what we end up with is a black and white mask so wherever there is grass it will be white and then as the grass starts to turn into any other layer so dirt or sand it becomes black and then eventually it is completely black. So keeping in mind how these samples actually work is really important and we will be using this in a lot of other videos. And then we just plug the grass into the grass. We hit save uh, and we're also going to put a zero into the dirt. My bad. Okay, so we've got the grass assigned and we hit save and what the fuck? Okay, so I've done goofed. Um, and I set my scale to 32, apparently. I just wanted it to go to 2. <laughs> there we go. All right, now you can see we have grass everywhere except where there isn't the grass layer. So it isn't going to be on the sand and it isn't going to be on the dirt. Uh, this is obviously a little bit too dense, so we're going to scale it down to 200. And while this does look completely ridiculous and I would not ship this game, we can see that it is functioning. Now, we could create another grass type so this one's going to be called i don't know whatever number two and on this one let's get some rocks or something uh, we'll get some rock small and let's get a another one so you can hit plus again and it will create another one so you can have multiple meshes in the same grass type um, let's get a let's get some bushes so then if we were to go to our landscape again and into here we sample our dirt layer. And you know what? Just for the sake of this video, let's get our dirt layer plus our sand layer. So you can add them together. And so now that we've plugged them in, we have to go to our grass and make sure that the thing is selected that we've made before. So grass tutorial one. You can see we've just got some rocks everywhere. We've got these bushes just jutting out uh, in both the sand and on the dirt. So there are pros and cons to using this procedural foliage stuff. Obviously the main pro is that you don't have to paint this by hand. You can just sort of paint your landscape and it will place, you know, a selection of foliage that you've set up by itself. 
Now, the downside of this is that none of these meshes can have collision. And so if you did want to place down, you know, big rocks that had collision, you would have to do that with the foliage tool. So just keep that in mind when you're using this. This is designed for things like grass and bushes that don't have collision. You can't use this for trees or anything. If you did want to paint things on just a specific layer of your landscape with collision, let's say I've got all these trees here. Down here where it says inclusion landscape layers, I can type dirt and I'm going to set the density of these to one. And now I can just paint in big broad strokes and it's only going to paint these trees on the dirt layer. So that can be very powerful. And these all have their collision enabled. So a player can, you know, bump their head against this. That's the grass output node all summed up. That's about all the uses you can get from it. Uh, it is quite limited, but at the same time, it can save you a ton of time when it comes to designing your worlds and stuff like that. And because all of this foliage is placed procedurally, you don't actually have to store the location of all the instances of, you know, the grass. It will procedurally generate it every time, you know, you load the level or something. So if you think about it, if you've got like, you know, a, a billion grass instances that would cover your entire landscape, it doesn't have to actually store any of those locations anywhere. It just generates it as it needs to. So if you found this educational and or entertaining, make sure you hit like and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all the new videos that are coming out about landscapes and materials and animations. And if you do want to say thanks for the tutorials, we do have a $1 Patreon tier now. So feel free to check that out in the description below. If you have any questions about these tutorials or you need help with Unreal Engine 4 or 5 in general, uh, feel free to join our Discord. It's full of helpful members from all around the world and we always try and solve everyone's issues. So with that, I say goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>